Okay, in this video I'll be doing the final lab for the Ansible ad hoc commands course from a Cloud Guru, which is formerly Linux Academy. And I'm using their old website, but the new website is a Cloud Guru. And in this lab, the task that I've been given is some consultants have been employed to perform audits on a number of your syst of systems in your company's environment. And I need to basically configure a jump host that was created for them. I need to create the users that the security team gave me to create. I need to uh, do that on all the database servers. And then I need to make sure that audit D is running to audit what the consultants do. So to summarize, create these users and copy their authorized SSH key to each user to their correct location. So the new accountants can log in with the SSH key and then our company can audit what the consultants are doing with audit D. And I'll be setting that up in the cloud environment using CentOS and AWS that they've spun up for me. And so I will speed the video up and then I'll pause and I'll slow it down and talk over any points that are relevant. The microphone working awesome okay all right i've logged into the cloud environment everywhere i need to now it's time to start configuring them all right i'm ready to create the users on the two control nodes if i pull up say one control or one uh, of the manage nodes, the first database server, and I look, password file, I need the cat. You'll see we don't have any supervisor or consultant user here. So I'm going to create that on both of those machines simultaneously using Ansible. So we specify the group in the Ansible inventory file that we want to use. We're going to need to do this with sudo, so we give it the tack b um, flag, and then with tack m, we specify that we want to use the users module, which takes only one argument in order to create a user, and it's going to be... Yeah, I wanted to double check this with the Ansible docs, and yeah, it's not username, it's name. That is the argument that it takes. So the name equals, and we are creating a user list. Why don't I do another SSH session so I can look at that list? Yep, so we need consultant and supervisor. So we'll do consultant first. So I got the DB systems is what the group is called, not DB servers. Oh, one thing that it's very valuable for any sysadmin or DevOps guy to know is that whenever you're working over SSH, you can enable a built-in VI mode, which allows me to move my cursor around exactly where I want uh, to go in, in and out of insert a normal mode. Uh, I mean, if you don't know VI, that won't be useful to you. But if you do, then even if you're not on a machine that's like custom like mine, where I can, you know, do a bunch of VI stuff because I've configured it on my machine, but on somebody else's machine that I don't want to install my own dot files on, Bash has a built-in VI mode, which allows you to very easily do things like change DB servers to DB systems. Let me run this. Module users. Have I got the... Oh, <laughs> I mistyped the module name. And there we go. We have this on both of those machines. And so we can very easily go over and create the supervisor user as well on both of these machines. So now that's done. We've created the users we need to create. Now we need to copy the authorized key file for each user to the correct location so that new accounts can log in with SSH. OK, so I figured out more of what they're asking for. On our control node, the security team has given us not only a list of users to create, they've also given us a keys folder, which I believe I'm already in. Yeah. So in the home directory, we've got the keys folder. Inside the keys folder, we've got the consultant and the supervisor. And then if we go into one of those, we're going to have the authorized key file, which will have their key, which needs, this is their uh, public key, which needs to be pasted into the two servers that the consultants are going to audit so that they can SSH from the jump host to the servers that they are auditing. And with Ansible, we need to create the necessary directory on those servers and copy this key into the authorized key file on those servers 
so that the consultants can log in from the jump host using their accounts that they need to be able to access machines with. Okay, so the first thing to do, and I, I referenced the commands for the, for the um, lab to make sure that I was understanding their instructions correctly, but the first thing they want us to do is to create the .ssh folder in these users' home directory, which we can do with, we're going to have to do this with sudo, and we use the file module because you can specify in the arguments of the file module that you want it to create a directory. And so we can do state equals directory. The owner would be, let's do it for consultants first, because I believe they are the owner is consultants. The group is going to be consultants. And then we'll want a typical Unix set of permissions. I have an extra quote here. There we go. Yep. I missed an argument here. And that is the path of the directory we want to create, which will be home consultant.ssh. I have mistyped path. I hit the bracket key instead. So I can replace that with the vim mode and run it again. And there we go. That worked correctly. And I'll go ahead and do this for the supervisor user and group as well. Supervisor, supervisor. And that's done also. So the next thing is copy the authorized keys. In this case, we aren't creating a file We're copying it. We want to copy the keys consultant. Keys consultant authorized keys. So we then want to in the db, what is it, db systems? Yeah, db systems. We want to copy. Okay, so we want to copy source, which is specified with src. It's going to be home, ansible, let's see. Do it, is tree on a, no, tree is not on a normal unit system, or at least not on CentOS. So it's keys consultants dot ssh and then what's the authorized key file that they want inside the consultant folder and then the destination is going to be inside home consultants dot ssh i think that should be enough to specify looks like on the documentation does not need to specify the whole thing and you're going to need to have the owner of consultants at not uh, that was playbook style Ansible, not ad hoc style Ansible. And then a mode of 0600 so nobody but them can read it. Okay, should be good. And there we are. I love it when you try something and it works the first time. So in this case, I can just take this monster of a command let me let me do this so i can see it better well first off just clear this whole thing there we go and now we're gonna do supervisor same thing for the supervisor user and then make sure we change the owner and the group to supervisor as well and there we go we have copied the authorized keys for both of the users, consultant and supervisor. The next thing is make sure audit D is enabled and running on all systems. Okay, I'm guessing that that means audit D is already installed. And I did a bit of Googling to see if there's a good way to find out if it's installed with an Ansible query. Uh, basically, the easiest way to do that is to try and enable it. And if it fails, then I'll look at the output, see that it's not installed, and install it with Ansible. So we're going to do this on the DB systems as root with the service module. We're looking for the name, a state. It needs to be started, and then we'll make sure that it is enabled. And enabled means that it will continue to be started even if the server is rebooted. And that worked. So we have completed this lab. We have configured the jump host that the security team gave us 
to create the necessary users. Well, actually what we've done is we've configured the, the servers, the consultants are going to audit so that the jump host can access them by configuring the necessary users and copying the authorized keys so that the consultants can SSH from the jump host to the DB servers that they are going to audit.